Should I start? Mark, wait two minutes. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. Okay, so hello, I'm Daniel, and I'm here today to talk about a tool that we integrated in the kernel um, two releases ago, 5.17, which the name is Real-Time uh, Linux Analysis Tool, RTLA. And uh, I work for Red Hat in the real-time team, and I, and I basically work this, doing analysis on the real-time, and now working on runtime verification on the, on the logical aspects of Linux, but basically trying to make analysis out of the of the kernel by analyzing tracing basically <clears throat> right I always trying to put some 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 backgrounds of theory where I'm, I'm come from mostly so Linux has been used as a, a real-time operating system it's a fact right people might might not like it but <clears throat> it, it's a fact and there are multiple reasons for people to use it uh, one of them is the software stack, like we had just had the presentation about ROS. Things are, are, are being built to run with Linux as the default operating system. And we have a manpower, people that know how to use Linux. <clears throat> like, and, uh, but mainly, because Linux nowadays achieves the desired timing behavior, uh, <clears throat> the, the granularity of the scheduling decisions that we have on Linux are good enough for the vast majority of applications, right? And uh, there are some key features to, to help on that. One of those is the fully preemptive mode, the preemptrt, that hopefully will not be the preemptrt anymore. Like in the next release, it will be just Linux in this mode <clears throat> and, and real time scheduling with SCAD deadline and, and among other things, right? So, however, one of the problems that we have nowadays is that the timing properties of Linux, they are, they are analyzed using a, a black box approach which sometimes is not that convincing when you need to run things like on safe critical systems. <clears throat> so for example, we have cyclic test and Sysjitter OS LAT that try to mimic some workloads, typical workloads, and try to report a latency, and, and uh, then we can move on trying to see if, uh, if it's good or not. Uh, the black, black, box, uh, black box approach, it works. There's nothing to say. Primtrt was developed using it, so it's not that it doesn't work. It, it works, but it has some drawbacks. For example, it, it doesn't give a root cause analysis of the problem. And uh, there are ways to do the root cause analysis, most, mostly involving trace, uh, but tracing is not that accessible from known experts, right? <clears throat> and, uh, and also, trying to select the things that you would like to trace and try to refine going back and forth on the, all the possibilities takes time. And, uh, and moreover, uh, uh, another argument is that with the merge of the parameter T, the real time will go to the masses. <clears throat> so all, all the kernel developers will have to start 
testing their algorithms with the parameter t because uh, a, pre a regression on the parameter t will not be a regression on the parameter t pet set, those guys in the garage. It will be a, a regression on Linux. So, but, but not everybody is, is interested in learning all the details of RT. Like I'm not interested in all the details on file systems because there's, there's just an, uh, an amount of, of uh, knowledge that we can handle, right? Uh, so we should not impose to the, or the parameter T developers should not impose to all the other developers to be aware of all the details of the parameter T to try to debug, it, it's unreasonable. So, and that, that is the story that brings to the, this new approach that RTLA is bringing. So, the, the RTLA tries to turn that black box approach into a white box approach and integrates both the workload that we try to mimic to get that, uh, that latency measurement and, <clears throat> and uh, the tracing that allows us to figure out what happened when a bad value, for example, occurred. And uh, RTLA, it has in kernel, it used some tracers. And in user space, we have a tool that makes easy for us to use those tracers in a more automatic way. And also to help out in data analysis. So kernel tracers. Uh, RTLA used two tracers, the OS noise tracers that tries to measure the, the OS noise metric common on the HPC, but also common on RT nowadays with the usage of network function virtualization, uh, where, where people try to isolate the most the CPU and try to give one CPU for a, a busy loop ta task that loops on the network, right? And uh, the timer not trace that is, is basically a cyclic test on steroids that uh, does that game of, uh, I'll explain it better, just introducing timer not is, is it's like cyclic test. So starting with the OS noise tracer. <clears throat> so the operating system noise is a well-defined uh, metric is on, on HPC. And, uh, and it is basically the amount of interference uh, experienced by an application by the operating system activities, but not only, but any kind of uh, activities. And it's generally a very fine-grained metric. So trying to give an idea of the context, so HPC workloads, they are generally composed of parallel jobs. You have one, one dispatcher that dispatches the jobs for all the CPUs. They run in parallel, and then when it's done, it collects the result, right? Uh, the problem of uh, um, OS noise is that by delaying the, the execution of, of one of these threads, you can create those, those vacuum on the execution, right? And, and delaying the entire ex execution of the computation. And there are some uh, HPC real-time workloads, mostly on the, on the networking side, where glitches like uh, operating system noise as high as 20 microseconds aren't tolerable, uh, tolerant. Uh, so, the OS noise tracer, uh, it, it's a kernel tracer. You, you enable it using the trace infrastructure that also dispatches a workload. And it tries to mimic that HPC workload, dispatching, for example, one thread per CPU. Then, uh, the tracer also hooks to existing trace points and parses this data trying to take out the meaning of that, that uh, trace. And uh, it's good that it's in the kernel because I can synchronize the workload and the tracers atomically. So I do not have false positives on the output of my tracer. Uh, there is a, a paper that is under review, a peer-reviewed paper uh, under review where I explain all this in detail. It hopefully will be published soon. It, it's on it's on the way, where I go into the details. But the kernel documentation explains everything in the bits. Uh, so, these, uh, these, the workload, the, the tracer dispatches the workload on CPU, it bees loops reading the time, and when it detects a glitch in the time, it reports, okay, there was a, a noise noise, and there was this amount of uh, tasks that interfered. It would be, it would be better with example but it also can enable hardware or VM-induced latency. <clears throat> so, getting a little bit more practical. Uh, using the OS noise tracer, I can go to the tracing directory and echo this OS noise tracer for the current tracer and read the trace. 
So this is the periodic output that the tool gives. At the end of a given period, that thread that was running trying to capture uh, OS noise latencies, it prints a summary. And this summary shows how, how much runtime it, it, it took during this period, the amount of noise that that thread detected while running, how much CPU was available, so for my workload thread, and uh, from all those noises, the highest uh, noise from a single execution, for example, a, a thread printed, what was the largest one? It, it's printed here. Moreover, as I'm also tracing the system, I am able to identify <clears throat> already here to give a hint of what is causing those latencies. Uh, for example, I, I say how many uh, IRQs happened, how many software queues, threads, but also hardware, and I'll explain better how I detected this. So before I go in there, there is there's a set of configurations that I can I can do on the tracer. I can say which CPUs I want to run it, or the uh, runtime and a period that the task will be dispatched. And if I want to stop the trace, like if the total amount of uh, noise was higher than a given value, or if a single noise was higher than a given value. And there is also this fine-tuned uh, knob here where I can say, because the OS Noise Tracer, it works by reading the timer twice and trying to detect a glitch in the time. Uh, here is a fine-tuned where I can say the, how much, how short is the glitch that I would like to detect. For example, uh, one microsecond or five microseconds, the thing that's tolerable. And uh, the default value is, is five microseconds. I've been running it if... Uh, uh, one microsecond and it, and it works. Um, if, if there was too much overhead on the tracer, running with one microsecond would be bad because it would not converge the number, but it, it's being able to run with one microsecond and, and, and it's, it's a good property of the tracer. So that, that part of the tracer was just showing uh, an overview, <clears throat> but I also said that it was possible to detect the root cause of the problem, right? So going further down the road, we can ask okay, what kind of interference can create the noise on my workload. Trying to abstract that, we, we can use these four levels of tasks that we have on Linux. So we have no maskable interrupts, we have interrupts that can be preempted by no masked interrupts, we have software queues that can be preempted by uh, IRQs and known and NMIs, and then we have threads that can be preempted by software queue, by NMI, blah, blah, blah. I did a formal model explaining this, and, and the blah, blah, blah can be very long, but I will stay here. <laughs> so, but we can also suffer interference that for things that are like in, in a highest priority, for example, SMIs that just preempt the operating system and bye-bye. Or if you are running a virtual machine, you can have the host preempting the vCPU. And these things are not detectable by trace because you have no tracing uh, about the execution of those things. But because I read the time, when I have like a, a, a threshold higher than the value, I can detect that thing. But there is more. <clears throat> uh, with the example, it will be more clear. So, to be clear. Uh, so, for me to detect the execution of those four levels of tasks, the tracer added a more, four, four more trace points. And these trace points report the duration of each of those interferences. And uh, because, like a thread, for example, I have my, my measurement thread running, a thread can preempt my thread. But while running this thread, I can have an interrupt inside of it. And, and, and then I can have an NMI, right? So we can have this nesting uh, uh, hierarchy of tasks. The trace points are aware of that and they are at a, a discounted value. They reduce the value of the interference of, of one on top of the other. So all the values here are, are net values. You, you can just read the value and that was the, the overhead added by that task. You don't need to try to compute on and figure out, okay, this value here is, my thread was running for one microsecond, but I have a, a 20 microseconds interrupt on top of it. So the tracer will say, the interrupt was the culprit for 19, and then my thread was just one, and that's why the, the overall is 20. Right? The, the trace points to all this magic in kernel, and that's why the workload is in kernel, so I can synchronize everything uh, atomically. Uh, and there is a trace point that when the workload detects this, this noise, it prints 
two things. The amount of noise that was uh, detected by the tool and how many interferences from tasks were detected. And that will be useful to explain this. So here is the system running. I set it to stop if there was a noise higher than uh, eight microseconds. So it was running and I see here the IRQ noise. It was this timer and it started at this time and this was the duration, blah, blah, blah. And then you can see how this trace growing up. Here it detected one noise of 8.8 .8 microseconds. And it's already saying this uh, noise was caused by the two previous uh, task, ex task execution. So I just need to look back for the two previous uh, events. So it was caused by this migration thread and the timer that run before it. If this interference value is zero, it was something below the operating system. So I can detect hardware noise and, and uh, preemptions on virtual machines. And because this data is synchronized, th th there is a nice comment on the code, how do I do the synchronization? Uh, there is no false positives on it. So you can trust on the data. So the next tracer is the timer lag tracer. The timer lag, okay, so the, the timer latency has been used as the metric for the preemptivity, right? Because at the very end of the day, cyclic test is a timer testing tool. If you read the code, it's a timer testing tool. So it empirically measures the observed scheduling latency uh, of the highest priority thread or any priority you set to the thread, right? Uh, and uh, the timer lot tracer uh, measures the same metric. It tries to mimic that behavior, but it's integrated with tracing and has more data that you see now. So just trying to explain here if, uh, uh, how, how, for example, uh, the cyclic test works. You have your, your thread, you set it a timer in the future, go to sleep and wait to be activated. So the external timer will activate an IRQ that will activate the task, that will read the time and compute the, the, this delta, right? That's how cyclic test works. Timer lot goes a little bit further. <clears throat> because I'm running the kernel, I have my own <clears throat> uh, uh, IRQ handler for the timer that we wake up the thread. So I can also capture not, I can capture not only the latencies, uh, latencies suffered by the thread, but also the latency suffered by the uh, IRQ right when it starts to execute, right? Not, not when the IRQ wakes up the thread that would incur uh, and have to figure out the, the amount of uh, overhead that I had on the wake up and taking RQ logs. No, it's just the RQ handler starts to run, it prints the, the latency. And that's useful to detect cases in which the hardware is causing me the latency. So uh, an example of running these tracers, uh, go to the tracing directory, you say echo timer lot to the tracer and brrr, run the read the trace. So here is uh, it, uh, the, there is this per CPU threads running in the CPU zero. There was the first activation. In the context of the IRQ, the, the timer latency was 900 nanoseconds. Then in the context of the thread that was later awakened, the overhead was 11 microseconds. And this is the summary output of the two. It has the same set of uh, configurations that I had for OS LAT. But I can also say to the tracer to capture a stack trace of the thread that was running when the IRQ happened. And so I can use this information to figure out when, when there is a latency added by the thread, where this thread that was running here was executing. So I can look in the back trace and check the code there to see where is the section with a long IRQ disabled, for example. So timer lot analysis, again, uh, the latency can be caused by that uh, for uh, kind of, uh, of tasks, but also by the previously task running with preemption or IRQ disabled. Parenthesis here. Uh, <clears throat> in the future, there will be in the RTLA, the integration of the RTSL tool that I developed as part of my PhD that can detect the worst case uh, latency with a theorem proving the worst case latency. 
but that that tool will depend on having the IR, preempt IRQ disable trace points that are a little bit more costly and are not enabled by default. So that's why we still have the timer not tracing doing a halfway between these two tools. But that's for uh, for next year. <clears throat> so again, I can use those same trace points with a, a, a slight difference. Uh, the NMI and the RIQ trace points, they reported the same value. The soft RIQ and the TRAD uh, trace points, they don't report the entire uh, execution time of these TRADs, but only the execution time from the execution of the IRQ. Because it's from the execution of IRQ, the amount of time that I care. So I don't need to try to compute the value to discount the, the total execution time, uh, minus the, the thing that happened before the IRQ, which is the thing that I care. So I'm already doing the, this cleanup on the trace points already in the tracer. To make it easy to understand the tracer so I don't need to go back in text files and do this thing that I've been doing for 10 years and I'm tired of doing it. <laughs> so here's one example. I go to the tracer, I enable the, the tracing director, I enable the tracer. Uh, I say stop the trace if I have more than 500 microseconds uh, uh, noise and uh, get the stack trace of their RQ if the, the latest was higher than 500 microseconds. And here is the, is the trace, right? So I have my timer latency here. It was 1.6 microseconds, so the problem is likely not here. Things were running smooth. Then I have here accounting a timer noise of uh, uh, 11 microseconds. Another timer noise. Oh, this is 11 microseconds. It was the timer that woke up the thread. Then I have yet another timer of seven, seven uh, microseconds that runs something. We can later go here and enable other tracing, but that's something, but it, it's not the, the, the main factor. And then I have here a thread noise of uh, 838 uh, uh, microseconds. So this is the dominant factor, right? The problem is here. So now let's try to, to look in the stack trace. So next page, but it's the continuation. Here I see this, okay, this is my timer not IRQ. It should be running, that, that's where I get the, the thing. It was blah, 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 here's all the IRQ. Then I have this, okay, from here on is the IRQ. From, from here down, it's the, the thing that we're running before. This was just an example that I placed in documentation. I created a dummy uh, module that was just doing a one millisecond sleep with preemption disabled. And, and the tracer was able to capture that, right? It's dummy load, one millisecond, print disabled. All the things that I'm showing here are exactly the kernel documentation that is on the kernel documentation thing. So it's basically, I'm, I'm, it's an interactive read of the kernel documentation. <laughs> so, uh, and now we get to the RTLA. So RTLA is a user space tool. And it serves as a front end to set up, trace, and do some data analysis of those tracers, right? So the idea is that it transforms those tracers into a benchmark tool, right? Because I'm interested on the numbers, not on only when it executes here and there, but the collection of the numbers, right? And uh, it's in C. It's hosted inside the kernel, like Perf and then the BPF tool, the tools inside the, the tooling directory. And uh, in this initial implementation, the RTLA has, has two commands, right? Uh, one is RTLA OS noise, that measures the OS noise, and the RTLA timer lot that measures the timer latency. So, uh, the RTLA timer noise is the interface for the tracer. Uh, it adds more options to the tracer. From the RTLA, I can change like the priority of my workload and, and uh, it allows me to enable other tracing features. For example, I would like to enable the default trace points of the workload, but also all the timer trace points or all the scheduling trace points straight from the tool. I can also enable things like the tracing histograms from this. And I will show on a demo what is possible. So it has this RTLA uh, OS noise has two modes. One is the top mode 
that shows a, a, just the summary of the, the, of the workload, of the, of the summary of the tracer. And the OS noise hist that computes histograms. It just collects histograms, and so then they can be parsed into data that people can do in nice presentations like the one we had yesterday. <laughs> so same thing, uh, timer lot. It's for the timer lot tracer. Some more options that I can do by hand there. Set the priorities of the thread. Set it to run SCAD deadline, yada, yada. And it has two modes, the top mode and the hist mode for the presentation. So I'm a... I'm a user testing my real-time kernel setup. I'm, I'm not like that guy that wants to be, oh, I am the real-time dude. I'm just using it, right? I have other things to care about. So, and I wanted to measure the latency and generate a report if my latency is higher than uh, 50 microseconds, right? Before RTLA, I had to set up cyclic test. I had to try to understand what I should trace and go to the Linux RT, RSC channel, and make this question yet again, what should I enable tracing? <laughs> and who is on that channel know that that happens? And figuring out things by myself, by hand, by scripting. And, and actually, this was the thing that I was doing um, too. I had these tracers done, and, and I did this many times. Many times, that, that was my, before working on development at Red Hat, I was working at support at Red Hat, and that was the thing that I did every day, computing deltas by hand. BC was my friend. <laughs> it, it, it was good. Like it, it's a good, good thing to, to give you work that you can justify. But, uh, so, but how much easier my life gets using RTLA? That easy. I can just say there is this option which is which is the automatic tracing that I say it, it starts the tracer, set the priorities, the, the full priorities, and uh, it measures the latency, it sets up the tracing session, it, uh, it enables the minimum set of, of events that a, a, an expert would, would need to be able to start in, going forward in the analysis, right? It's not the solution, but it's at the starting point, a precise starting point. And it stops the trace if the latency is higher than, than 50 microseconds, saving the results to a test file, text file. That's it. This is just one comment. So at the end of the day, RTLA is the automation of, of an, an expert analysis. It was the automation of the things that we were doing at Red Hat for, for 10 years. And I did this, uh, uh, getting people by hand and say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Like Clark Williams and Yuri Lely. So we try to automate that. So just, just a demo here, uh, disclaimer, I am not a YouTuber and I'm not, I'm, I'm good on taking photos, not on editing videos. This photo is my hobby, but videos is not. So is, let's see if it's not, okay. Here's a demo, it was, it says here pre 5.18 because it contains the features that I added to RTLA that was up for the 5.18 merge window. It was before the release. But now this is the, the thing that you get on Fedora. If you do the NEF install uh, RTLA, it's basically this code. And it's av already available on Fedora. The tracers are enabled and the tool is packaging, is being packed now. And uh, it's, uh, if it's not, it's on the way on SUSE. Daniel Wagner is working on that. And uh, I saw on that report of Ubuntu uh, enabling the parameter T, they also mentioned that the tool will be there. So it should be available for, for the, the main distros. And I still didn't wrote a, an article for LWN because I was waiting for the packaging because otherwise you need to say, oh, you need to install, blah, 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 blah. blah. And people say, okay, it's not turning my life easier. It's just, it's just just telling me how to compile things. No, everything on its own time. So let's go back here. So the environment, just to explain my system. It, it's my, my working um, desktop, working, working station. So it's a simple system, 24 CPUs, a single NUMA node, 24 CPUs, uh, 12 CPUs, 12 threads, 12 more threads. And uh, I'm using uh, <coughs> the parameter T, Half of the C, oops, yeah, I said I'm not good at videos. 
Uh, yeah, that's uh, because I'm, I'm using inside the. Um, okay, let go to YouTube. Okay, so half of my CPUs are isolated. That's why you see the difference on the results of one CPU and the other. But it's based on Prime 30 patch with the, the things I had to patch. So OS noise. OS noise top dash help. Here are the set of the feed, all the configurations. The configurations I mentioned. All the other things that I can do, like setting priorities and uh, adding other events to the trace. OS noise, I'm saying run OS noise with that tunable as one microsecond. And here it is. This is the top overview, it just do a summary, keeps collecting that summary from the trace and displaying it. So half of my CPUs have more noise than the others because uh, the system is just half of CPUs isolated. Uh, I'm seeing the IRQs, thousands of IRQ per second here because I'm having Hertz and here I have no hertz. And, and yeah. I have a nice analysis of it in the paper, but I need for it to be accepted before I make it public. So here I'm starting a histogram, and Daniel from the past forgot to say sudo. And here you go. So it, it keeps running until I hit control C. Uh, there is an option that is dash, and Daniel from the past will repeat this with delay. So, and, uh, and there is an uh, duration option, and I say I want to run this for 10 microseconds, for 10 seconds, or for 10 hours. Here are the histograms of each noise execution, and some, some values in the end with like the maximum, the minimum, the minimum, the maximum, the amount of noise. And you can follow it. So the timer lock tracer. Again, all these default options plus some others like the more advanced event tracing and setting priorities. Like I can I can have timer lock running with uh, measuring latest with SCAD deadline. Doesn't make much sense because it's not a property of deadline scheduler to have good latencies. So I, I have, uh, I set a, a workload in the background, and now you see the non-isolated CPUs having a higher value because there is the workload running there. The isolated CPUs keep uh, the value low. And, it's, and, ah, and here you see, see here, it, it's, this is, the, this is the, the cyclic test output, the like, the thread latency. But here I also have the IRQ latency. And I can see here, it's 12 here of 18. So mm, there's something that's delaying the, the IRQ a lot. So I already have like, from these, from just this output, I have already have more evidence of where to look at. It was enough, Daniel. Okay. And here Daniel from the past is trying to say, see the RQ values, that's why they're good. As, uh, isolated CPUs, yeah, we got it, Daniel. <laughs> Next time, Daniel, just don't do it. Let, let the Daniel from the future to handle it. I, I'll get better, I'll get better. So, and here is the histogram, and probably, uh, again, it runs to you. I hit Control C, or use. Oh, I can now. I can use dash D duration to set. Uh, there's a typo there. Uh, okay, too much data. That's because it reports data for the thread, but also from the IRQ. So I have two columns for CPU, and I have 24 CPUs. So I have 48 columns. I just yeah, lots of data. Uh, here, uh, I'll go forward. I, I just run it with less 
less CPUs, just five CPUs. And here's an example of the output, right? IRQs, thread, IRQ, thread. Use with care, and that's how we call. Tracing. How much time do I still have? Okay. So it was. Oh, let me see what the from the past did. So stop the trace if there is a latency higher than twenty microseconds. There is a workload running in the background. So, okay, it stopped. Save the trace to the file. I will integrate, uh, instead of saving, now I'm saving, oh, I'd say oh, the stop trace hit on CPU4. And then I can just look at CPU4 and then try to go back in time and understand. So tread noise, six microseconds, probably not the problem. IRQ noise of 13 microseconds. So in this case, it was the IRQ had more more, more latency than the thread, but it's, it's somehow counterintuitive, right? We generally think that the IRQs are faster than threads. Advanced tracing. Uh, so here I'm saying I would like to create histograms for the thread noise that my terminal is facing. And I would like to create histograms for the IRQ noise that my terminal is facing. And then it runs. Fast forward, I think it was 30 seconds, okay. Ah, okay, I said to stop the trace, yes. Stop the trace on 25, that's. So the trace is stopped, and uh, the values of the, the noise, the histograms, were automatically saved into files. And so I can have a histogram of the duration of all the noise that happened during that execution. And I can see what kind of threads are adding more to the values. I will add a, an option. Okay, see, nine, nine, between nine and nine microseconds. I will add an option to parse this data and show it in a more beautiful way. Right? This too is under development yet. And I also add an option to save the, the trace file into a trace.dat uh, file that to be read with trace command and uh, with uh, kernel shark. So I hear, oh, the, okay, here are the, uh, there are queues and the timer is taking up to 20 microseconds. And uh, I think there, yeah, my, my network was editing eight microseconds here. So, all this information, it's now easy to collect. And, and the idea is to, and here you see that I like trucks and computers. And <laughs> so that's it. Uh, uh, RTLA, mm, slide show. RTLA is upstream. Finally, Daniel is not talking about the future and on his research projects. He's talking about something that is a product. And uh, it's upstream, the tracers are there since 5.14, the user space tool since 5.17. These tracers are enabled on Fedora and Red Hat products. They're also enabled on, on uh, SUSE and uh, on the recent kernels. And then the people in Ubuntu are also enabling it on the real-time kernel. The, the package is ready on Fedora. it would be ready if not already on SUSE and Ubuntu. And there are more tools on the way, and here's the, the, the academic paper that I, I made that I show the, to demonstrate the latency on the kernel. RTSL will, will, will soon be part of those tracers and the, and the RTLA in user space. There will be more tools that, that we will develop and motivate people in the research to, to, to help on that. And yeah, that's it. Uh, I cannot, so where is the, will the paper be published? I, I, I better wait for it to be published and, uh, and I will, it's a nice journal. I'm sorry, I, I'm not. There's a question in the 
chat. Um, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, so just bear with me. It says, what kinds of timers does Timerlot support? Clock, NanoSleep, and Timer Create, and Timer SD? I'm using just one timer for now, which is the same timer that I use on, that we use on the SCAD deadline. But the idea is not that to, to test that source clock, right? It's, it's, it's to test the latency for handling one, one case of timer. But that can, the, the kernel can be also extended, the tracer, and add other kinds of timers. Yeah. So, so the question is, uh, by adding the, the, the output on the trace uh, dot .at format used by the tracing tools, if it will be able to use on kernel shark, yes. That, 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 that's why I will export the, the data into the kernel shark, into this trace dot .at file, because it can be used on other tools that use it. From the tool it will show, it's just a, a tracer. Yeah, it should just work out of the box. If you enable the tracers by hand via trace command, it will add show. You, you, can, you can use this tracer with trace command uh, as well. It, it works. So the idea is, is for it to be integrated with those. That, that's why I'm using tracing infrastructure. I'm, I'm developing on that because there is an ecosystem around it. Uh, the question is if I will upload the slides, yes. The, it, it will be uploaded on the stop. I will stop. <laughs> so I will upload it to, to the system, probably they ask me to upload, but otherwise it will be on my personal page. I put all the, my presentations there, all my papers there. Jake? Oh, no, okay, good, thank you. Oh, and you can just read the kernel documentation. It was yeah. <laughs> all the main pages are in the kernel documentation. It's not my Windows. It's not my Windows. Uh, all the documentation is in the kernel documentation. All the main pages for RTLA are in the kernel documentation. Everything is integrated with the kernel documentation.